All right, so let's go ahead and look at an example of a bar graph. They basically look like histograms superficially, but the way you could tell is by looking at the x-axis. This is how you're going to be able to tell whether it's a, um, whether it's a histogram or a bar graph. Because on the x-axis, you should see a categorical variable. All right? So let's look at an example. If you pull up the Excel file that you could download, here we have all of these variables, right, in these columns. And each of our cases is one of our uh, people from Facebook, right? These are our 100 friends from Facebook. Let's go down to the column that says relationship status. Here it is. So here's relationship status. Now this is something that Facebook got really big for uh, because all of a sudden you could sort of internet stalk people and figure out what their relationship status was. But here, what we see is, hey, relationship status, it has a whole bunch of numbers. If you click on the variables sheet, it'll tell you what those numbers stand for. So relationship status is in column H. I'm just going to color this in red font so you could clearly follow along. Um, and if you scroll to the right, it tells you that it's a nominal kind of measure, and it's a categorical variable, perfect for doing bar graphs. Here's what the dummy coding looks like. Although there are numbers there, those numbers don't actually stand for numbers. They're just dummy codes. They are stand-ins for nominal um, names, so nominal categories. So uh, here it says, if there's a zero in that column, it just means that their relationship status was left blank or unfilled in. If they have a one, it means that they're single. If it's a two, they're in a relationship. If it's a three, they're engaged. If it's a four, they're married. If it's a five, it's complicated. And if it's a six, they just put something else. All right, so now we know that they have zero through six as the potential values that could be in that variable. So let's go to the relationship status sheet. Here I've already filled in the category labels for you and the statuses that they would have. Now let's make a frequency table. This is going to look the same as before. So let's go ahead and put in our formula, the equal sign first for the function count if. So I want Excel to count this person if they have a blank in their relationship status. So, oops, overshot. All right. So I put in a comma because I know I'm going to need that. All right. So here is my data, and I know this is going to stay put if I put in dollar signs. So I'm going to lock it in place and then say, okay, I'm just going to delete that. That just tells me what sheet we're in. Okay, so count in this data if it meets this criteria of zero. Okay, so I'm going to close my parentheses and let's see. Okay, so there's 13 people out of our 100 that have left their relationship status blank. They're mysterious. And so now I'm just going to copy and paste all of that down. And we see that just from looking at our frequency table, we could see that most of the people in our sample are single or in a relationship, right? So not too serious. All right, so here we'll, uh, we'll uh, select all of these before we make the bar graph. The reason I'm selecting these category labels is that when I select them, um, Excel will just fill it in for me. It'll fill in that x-axis for me. So handy to do. So I'm going to click on charts and go ahead and click on column. So here we go. Ta-da! All right, I'm going to delete that because it's redundant. All right, so here we have a nice bar graph. Notice that it looks almost exactly like a histogram. One of the differences is that in bar graphs, there's spaces in between uh, to indicate that these are separate bins that cannot be uh, sort of continuously looked at. Um, and because of that, we see that 
let's see, here we see the same information as we saw in the frequency table, that being single is the most frequent category. Uh, being in a relationship is the second most frequent. These are all um, much less frequent, and uh, it's, it's somewhat common to leave it blank, but not, not too common. All right, so that's one example of a frequency table. Uh, for, oh, sorry, a bar graph. All right, note that it looked just like a histogram, but the difference was we used categorical variables. All right, now let's take that example. I've just copied and pasted it on here. Um, let's look at whether shape, center, or spread of distributions that we've looked at before apply to bar graphs. Now let's think about this. 